Hey everybody, welcome to My Vaping Place. My name is Joe, and today we're going to be looking at this. The Serpent Elevate RTA, designed by Matt Cully from Suck My Mod, in conjunction with and manufactured by Watofo. Yeah, I know, I'm very late out of the gate with this review, considering that just about everybody and his or her brother did a review for this Addy last year. But you know what? I'm doing this now because I wanted to give this Addy a damn good shakedown and find out what really makes it tick or not. And that, my friend, takes time. Now, this Addy was not purchased by me as most of the products I review here on this channel are. In other words, a normal consumer purchase, just as you would be making from your local vase shop or online vendor. But believe it or not, I actually won this Addy from Daniel over at DJ LSB Vapes. Thank you, Danny. And also, believe it or not, it's actually the very first Watofo product I've ever had the opportunity to try out. And well, spoiler alert here, I was and am very impressed by it. So without any further ado, let's head on down to the build deck where I'll A, show you what the box looks like, B, show you what came in that box, C, I'll explain the differences between what came in this box and what you'll get in the box now, if you should decide to buy one that is, and D, I'll put a coil inner and I'll show you the very best way I found to wick it. And believe me when I tell you this is an important little thing with this Addy. When we're all through with that, we'll come back up here topside and I'll give you my take on this Addy, both its pros and its cons. So let's get on about this and I'll see you down below decks. Okay, folks, here we are down on the build deck and I'm going to be taking a look at this today. It is the Serpent Elevate, manufactured by Watofo and designed by Matt Cully over at the Suck My Mod YouTube channel. This is the retail packaging, but it is an early retail packaging. Now, the reason why I'm stressing that is because there are some differences between this packaging and the packaging that you will get if you go out to your vendor and you purchase it today. Not necessarily the packaging itself, but the contents of it. But I'll get more into that as we get along, okay? Uh, what you're looking at here is the front of the box. One side, watofo.com rainbow package contents url scratch and check rainbow again and on the back a picture of a rather nasty looking snake okay so let's open this thing up and take a look and see what we got inside now in here we have of course the tank itself which i'm going to put over here to one side out of the way you also get a blue resin drip tip rather nice it's a pretty little beastie. And you also get a PEI, or as it's also commonly known as Ultum, smoked bubble glass. Well, it's not actual glass, it's plastic, but yeah, um, it is a bubble container. This tank, when installed on the unit, will give you approximately four and three quarter milliliters of juice in your tank. The standard glass tank here, now remember this is a US and non-TPD configuration that you're seeing here. This tank will give you 3.5 milliliters of juice. Now for the UK and other places over in Europe that are under the TPD, uh, you will get a PEI or Ultim tank. I was going to say glass, but it's not glass, it's plastic. Uh, and that will contain two milliliters of juice. And I don't believe you get one of these in there. I'm not sure about that, but I believe so. All right, so put that off to one side. Now you also get a Goon to 510 adapter uh, for the drip tip. Okay, so you can use a 510 drip tip in there if you want. Now let's take out this here and get into the bottom side. Put that off to one side. Now, in here you get a package of spares. The spares that you get in here are a complete set of O-rings. You have flathead grub screws because the tank comes equipped with hex head grub screws installed standard. You also get this little L-shaped or J-shaped tool here. This is for positioning the coils on the deck as well as cutting leg length. More about this in a few minutes, okay? You also get 
a package of agleted cotton, two strips of it, designed for three millimeter inside diameter coils. You get your tools, one hex key, uh, one flathead screwdriver. You also get a, uh, if we can get it on the right side here, you're also getting two N80 coils, three millimeter inside diameter, 0.33 ohms each, power range of 40 to 55 watts. They are framed staple Clapton's. Uh, and here is all the information on the winding. You also get a user manual. If, I don't know if you can call it a manual, it's more like a flyer or pamphlet. Uh, comes in quite a few different languages, uh, English, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, some of them I don't recognize. I'm not fluent in any of them, so I'm not gonna go into that, okay? Having said all of this, I'm gonna put all this stuff here away. And we're going to get into the differences between these boxes. The ones that you will get today and the one that I've got here. Okay, now the main differences between the two of them are two. One is this bubble tank. Now the one that I have here is made of PEI. It is 4.75 milliliters uh, when installed on the tank. However, if you go out and buy one of these uh, Serpent Elevates today, you will get one of these in there instead. Real glass, okay? It is the exact same tank, as you can see, except that it's made of glass and not the plastic, all right? Now, if you get one of these here that's an older version, like I have here, that has the PEI bubble tank, and you can purchase these glass bubble tanks from Watofo, they're about three, four dollars each. And vice versa, if you get one of the glass in there, you wanna get the plastic because you're doing heavy duty work and stuff like that and you wanna have something that's a little bit less fragile than the glass, then you can also pick these up from Watofo as well. The other major difference between this packaging and the one that you're gonna to get today is this little L-shaped or J-shaped tool, more like a backwards L here. Now, these early ones came with this rod in there. What you would do is you would take and you'd slip your coil onto this rod, and then you would clip your leads level with this piece. Now, it's roughly about four to four and a half millimeters between here and here. Watofo, for some reason, I don't understand why, decided to include this. Now, this is a leg length cutting tool this is actually from a different from a different package that's the reason why the arrow here is showing at six millimeters instead of down here at the four but you'll notice that it comes in one millimeter leg length increments from four to eleven now from what i understand this is exactly the same thing that you would get in this package today okay um this is useless to me okay um, because Matt Cully stated that he feels that four and a half millimeter leg length is the best size for it. I find that four millimeters works better. Uh, that's just me. But yeah, if I was cutting it for it, that would be where I was putting it. Now, I don't know anybody who uses 11 millimeter leg lengths on their coils. I have never seen one yet, a tank or a dripper yet, that uses 11 millimeters for a leg length. This is totally butkus, okay? Um, I'll get more into that when we get upstairs to the top uh, and we start discussing this, but suffice to say, that's what you get instead of this rod, okay? I'm gonna take a look at the tank itself now. Now, the tank itself is 41.5 millimeters from the top of the drip tip to the base here, not including the 510. 35.3 millimeters if you exclude the uh, drip tip. It weighs 55 grams. It is 24 millimeters exactly from one side to the other side. As you can see here at the bottom, you have the Serpent Elevate logo with TOFO, the usual compliance, um, recycle, EU stuff, and also the name of the tank, Serpent Elevate. On the top here, you have a smoked PEI goon style trip tip. It is goon style because it does not have any uh, rubber O-rings here on the drip tip itself. All the O-rings are inside of the tank. That makes it goon style. Now, if the O-rings were here on the drip tip itself, as you see on this one here, uh, this would be a 10 style. 
the size is exactly the same and everybody is using Goon and A10 interchangeably, but there is a difference. This is Goon, that's A10. That's the difference, okay? So we're gonna put that to one side, put that to one side. Now, this is top fill. It is a screw top, top fill. You unscrew the top here like so, and it comes off. You have an O-ring in here to seal, excuse me, O-ring in here to seal, and another O-ring here to seal the tank, okay? You have two kidney size shaped holes here for filling your juice. They're not particularly big, but I can tell you that you can get a glass eyedropper into these. It's a little tight, but you can get it in. The reason why these things are not even bigger is because of the airflow. This is your airflow here. Now the airflow comes in and as you can see is angled down slightly. Um, because of this airflow being top airflow here, as you can see, you can't put too much space for the fill port there. This is about as big as you can get it, okay? The airflow adjustment ring is nice and sturdy, has hard stops at full closed and full open. You can remove this. It is held in place by a single O-ring here. And I don't know if you can see it here, but there's your hard stops right there. That corresponds with this groove that you see here in the airflow adjustment ring, okay? So we're gonna pop this back on here like so. Let's just make sure we get this in, in the right place. Bang, gotcha. Okay, so we're gonna take this and we're going to unscrew this. I'm gonna put this to one side. Now, because this is top airflow, all right, the airflow comes in from the top here and comes down through this section here between the bell housing and the inside dome of the, um, of, the ch of the atomization chamber itself. There is no inside part here. This matches up with, a p with part of the deck, which I'll show you in a minute. Airflow comes down and comes in here to this point here. Now, as the airflow comes in, it goes into the atomization chamber in two ways. One, through a little section here, as you can see, I don't know if you can see it right there, but the tweezer showing you where it is, the leg of the tweezer. It comes in here and comes up underneath your coil. It also comes in through this little port here in the side. And there is its opposite number on the other side here in both respects. You have four, as I said earlier, hex head grub screws here, here, and here. This is your wicking channel here and this channel here. This is a GTA style deck. This is not necessarily an actual um, RTA. This is actually a GTA RTA. Now, I don't remember offhand what the GTA stands for, but it actually what it means is that this deck is raised up off the bottom here. What that allows for is a juice well here at the bottom that you place your wicks down through this little port here into this uh, well down here, and it helps to supply a steady flow of juice to your wicks, which of course are installed in your coils. Now, the nice thing I like about this deck is that they have four individual screw ports here. This is your positive terminal here because, you can, as you can see, it's got the, um, got the Ultim um, insulator on here. Sorry, it's kind of late and I'm tired. Um, and you also have the one over here on the negative side. Now... Uh, what you can do is whether you wrap your coils clockwise or counterclockwise, or as they say over in England, anti-clockwise, doesn't matter. Anti-clockwise here and here, clockwise here and here, okay? This here is where you would put your um, coil positioning tool that I showed you earlier with your coil on it. You pop this down into here after you, of course, Loosen up your grub screws 
and then tighten in your grub screws and then make sure your coil is in and then you drape your wicks over here and into the uh, into the wicking channel okay now back here to the top part as you can see, this is domed. It's not radically domed, but it is domed. And it's, the machining on this is very, very nice. Uh, you remove your glass like so. It's held in place by this one O-ring up here. Likewise, you place your bubble glass on here as so, and it holds it in place. You would then, of course, take your deck and put it in like so, and that's what it would look like, basically. All right? So we're not going to be using this because I can't stand these shorty little drip tips. All right. More about that later. We're going to be using this one here. Now, A10 and the Goon style, as I said before, they're actually totally compatible. As you can see there, fits in place very nicely. And I think that looks pretty smart and snifty. I, th I like that. I really do. So I'm going to put that over there. This is going to go over here out of the way. And I'm going to put that over there out of the way. I'm going to put that up there so it doesn't get broken. And we're going to bring in the bell deck. Okay. Now, give me a minute. I'm going to, it's going to take me a minute or two here to configure this. But uh, we're going to switch over to a different set of cameras. All right. Okay, so what we're going to do is, uh, before I do that, let's open up these grub screws. Now, you want to make sure that you pull out these grub screws a good long ways, especially if you're going to be using anything other than a standard round wire build, okay? Anything other than a standard round wire build you're going to turn around, you're going to need to back those things out. Okay, so what we're going to be using here today, this is one of my own coils. Uh, this is from made from, by me. Uh, it is made from Lightning Vapes Clapton wire. I know the wire isn't the greatest. I also had to tighten it up a little bit. This is seven wraps around a three millimeter inside diameter. Um, should be coming out to about 0.4, 0.5-ish. Now, I'm going to take my coily tool here. Now I like to, yes, this is a, this is a custom coily tool that I had made for myself. Um, I kind of liked it, so I got it. So I'm going to use a, no, I'm going to use four, not 4.5. There we go. Matt suggests that we use, you use 4.5. I find four works better. Every time I've used a 4.5, um, I've wound up having issues with uh, coils coming in contact with the top of the chamber. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut my leads here now. Get these things the heck out of the way. Boo! Come back here, you. You're not supposed to be going AWOL. Alright, so we're going to pop this in here now. The reason why I said pop these screws out is because you're going to have to push these things into place here. And you don't want anything in the way. Now, you want to get these things, this coil, all the way down. I mean, when you're putting this thing in, you want this coil resting on the bottom of the uh, deck here. You don't want any space. You actually want to press down on it to make sure that the leg, the leg leads are in as far as they will possibly go. Then you want to take this and you want to tighten up on it. Because you want to make sure this thing is down in there as far as it'll go sideways. It will not come in contact in any way, shape, or form um, with the top of that bell chamber. The last time I did this on camera here, um, I had the coil uh, grounding off on top of the bell chamber. Um, yeah, it, uh, 
it was interesting. I had to, I decided that I was just going to scrap that whole mess of video and just redo it. All right. So you want to make sure that's in tight. We're going to make sure it's in tight anyway in a minute or two when I take this off. But just want to make sure that this is tight and in place. Ah, more fumble fingers tonight. Okay. Now, because this deck is so big, I make sure that I take this off. Let me just make sure I get that in the place in the right on in the camera and I take it off and I make sure that those are tightened down as tight as they can go and yeah, that one wasn't down as tight as it could go okay so let's put this back on here now what I'm going to do here, actually, I'm going to put this like, actually, let's see if this, yeah, that's better. This way you can see better what I'm doing. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the coil winding tool in, and I'm just going to lift it up, and I don't know if you saw that, but you saw how that tightened up there. That tightened the coil up and made sure that it was one is three millimeters inside diameter. Now you want to make sure that this is centered, completely centered there. Yeah, that should do it. That looks good. We've got about a millimeter, a millimeter and a half um, space underneath the coil. So there's plenty of room for air to come up underneath of it. Okay. See that? Plenty of room for air to come up underneath. Okay. All right. Next thing we're going to do is I'm going to take my cotton. Sorry about that. Uh, then we're going to cut off approximately eh, that much. About 15 to 18 millimeters from the side here. Always start with a fresh piece of cotton. Um, because this way you can get a good judge of the size. And then I'm going to take the outer hard pieces off, put them to one side. Now what I'm going to be doing here is a modified Scottish roll. Um, Scottish roll takes a very small piece of wick, spreads it out very thin, and then you roll it up and get to the size that you want. Uh, makes maximum efficiency of the amount of cotton. But it also ensures that the fibers are loose enough in the center and all of them are pretty much going in the same direction. Like so. Now, I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's two sides here. One side here is thick this other side here is also thick. The center has been thinned out. Now, if we go and make use of this, that's going to turn around. It's going to be an issue when we try to uh, feed this in. So I'm just going to cut off one of those two sides, like so. And then I am going to take my scissors here, and I'm going to put a little arrowhead here on one side like so, and then this one side that's thick here that was the outside of the, the original piece of cotton, that's going to be coming inside at the very core of the, co of the wick. You want to tighten this up here as best as you can, like so. And when you twist this and give a little bit of pressure on there, you see you get a much more efficient arrowhead. And you take this, and it's a little too big to fit through there. Take that, 
and push it in like so and pull it through now that's a little on the looski side but it should work now because this is a gta deck i like to make sure that i have plenty of wick down here at the bottom so what i'll do is i will take my wick and i will bend it down here like so and i will cut it right here at the base well I'll make the mark right here at the base then i'll take my scissors and i will cut just a little bit and that's where the mark is right there all right see that that's where the mark is i will cut just a little bit on the inside of that mark like so same thing for the other side here i will take this i will bring this down i will make my mark I will take my scissors, or scissors as I like to call them, as I've called them since I was a kid, and make my mark like so. Now, as you can see, when you take these here and you bend them down, because I cut inside from that mark, they don't fully meet the bottom of the deck, which is good because there's the metal, the thickness of the metal there. So what we're going to do is now, I'm not, I'm, normally I, if I was using this as a 3.5 millimeter, I'd comb this out. This side over here might have to get combed out a little bit because it was, I, I pinched and twisted it. So we're just gonna comb this out just a little bit here, just to make sure the fibers are straight and they're not all toughened up and everything else. Now, I'm gonna take my wick, make sure that it's even, close to the bottom here. Okay, Let's see if you can get that there down here close to the bottom I'm just gonna grab it with my tweezers like so I'm gonna lift and then I'm gonna bend it up you see that little bend that's there okay I'm gonna bend this and push this in like so now it's not gonna stay like that I am going to thoroughly push this down into this wicking channel all right like so and then I'm going to take my very pointy tweezers and I'm going to ensure that that cotton is fanned out on the underside of that screw ring just like that so that way it comes down nice and thoroughly nice and straight through the ring and then it fans out like that okay kind of like that all right i'm going to take this and this side same thing take it here lift it up get a little bell there hold that in place like so and then push it down into position i'm gonna have to move this over here so i can see what the heck i'm doing all right put that in like so ah uh, yeah there we go after all it's a good thing to see what you're doing like so yeah i want to try and get as many of these little fibers here in here like that and then like I said before take your little pointy tweezers and fan out the cotton between the bottom of the GTA what a juice well and that thread ring okay that's it boom now I'm just going to fire this up here real quick 0.42 ohms 0.42 ohms all right so allow me to get my juice out now this is a sweet grape and raspberry candy which graham with cheesecake and graham cracker crust um that i have in my little uh squonk general tube fill tube 
and I'm just going to put a little bit of juice down here right into the into the well just to verify that it is wicking properly now you can see the juice is climbing up that wick and same thing for this side I'm going to put the juice in there I'm going to keep it away from the wick at, up here at this point and just ensure that the juice is making its way up that wick okay yeah you can just barely see it's starting to go up there this side here is wicking really well this side here is a little bit on the tight side so I'm going to take my tweezers and then we're just going to make sure ah there you go see that as soon as I move that little bit of cotton there you can see the juice that's already soaked up that wick all right so we know that the wicking there is good I'm just going to put a juice here get this ju wick all nice and totally saturated I'm going to click this over to fire and then I'm going to put some juice on the coil itself and I'm just going to pulse the coil put a little heat through there so we can get the juice thinned out so it can flow between the juice and uh, between there oh you know what I completely forgot I've completely forgot to fire this thing up before I wicked it <sighs> I'm an asshole well you know what screw it we're just gonna go for it the way it is all right so let's see what we got for a all right that says 0.29 now from four something to point two to point two nine that's uh, that's interesting point two eight all right let's see how this thing reacts when I put the chimney on Point two six, point two seven, close enough. This is stainless steel, Clapton wire. So, all right, we'll just turn around and we'll go with it. What the hell? Normally, I would turn around and would have burnt that, but I'm really getting tired of refilming this thing five different ways from Sunday. So, we're just gonna go for it. I'm going to fill this up here. Do, however, make sure your ohms readings are correct. Okay? Now, one of the things that I do when I am filling up a tank for the first time, whether it's uh, like this or if I'm refilling it, I make sure that when I put it on my mod, first off, I make sure that it's solid. But I take this, because this has no juice flow control on here to shut it off. When I put this top on here, it's going to pressurize all this area in here, the air that exists in this area. That's going to pressurize and it's going to force that juice down and it's going to make this thing gurgly as all hell. So I put this on for the first couple of turns and then just before it gets to the end I turn it upside down and let the juice flow back in that means all the air that's in here goes up into the into the GTA uh, uh, wick well I don't know if you can see that there see how that bubble is up there 
Then I tighten this on completely. As you can see, it wasn't fully tight. Yeah. Oh, paper towel. Oh God, that tastes so good. Okay, so as you can see, the juice flow back up there and the air is up there. Now, let me switch back to the regular build cam here. And let me zoom this out. There we go. Okay. Mm. That's a little gurgly. Let's bring this up here to replay. Let us resample the ohms. This is saying 0.221 ohms. Okay. It is locked. 52 watts, 460 degrees Fahrenheit, and it is on replay. All right, now because I the ohms were less than 14%, which is the way I configured this, let's uh, Okay. <coughs> yeah, that's a lot of clouds. <laughs> Whew. All right, let's head back up topside and uh, we'll talk about this a little bit more, okay? See you up topside. Okay, folks, here we are back again topside. Now, before I start getting into the specifics of this tank, I want to go over with you some of the criteria that I use when I'm evaluating a product. Now this list is not an all-inclusive list by any stretch of the imagination and a lot of my first impressions are formed in the very first few minutes that I spend with that product opening up the shrink wrap. Now here are just a few of the specific things that I look for when I'm reviewing a product. One, the sturdiness, quality, and attention to detail of the packaging. This says a lot about the company making that product and what they think of their product and most importantly, what they think of you, the consumer. Remember, this thing has literally traveled halfway around the world and has been subjected to the tender mercies of more than just one shipping company. The presentation of any product means and is everything. The reputation of a company and the sale of a particular product can be made or broken in the very first few seconds that the customer has with that product. Two, what kind as well as the quality of any extras and or accessories that come packaged in the box? Are they made well and give one an expectation of their lasting for a good long while? Or do they feel like they're going to fall apart the very first time you touch them? Three. What is the quality and completeness of any and all instructional materials such as user's manuals, etc., that come in the box? Are they plainly and clearly written so that way you don't need a translator to read and understand them? Are there any pictures illustrating the written material, especially if the writing sucks? Four, what is the overall quality of the product? Was the assembly of the product done well or does it just look like it was thrown together by a one arm baboon? Is the product oily to the touch? Does it smell or in a few rare cases even taste of machining oil? Are the threads crunchy and or janky? Are there little bits of the metal that was milled off of the block that they used to make the Addy from still adhering to the block? Are the threads so sharp that you could cut yourself just handling the Addy? How's the quality of the glass? Is it just plain glass? That'll shatter the first time you try to tighten up on it just to keep it from leaking. 
are the O-rings made cheaply of silicon or are they made of solid nitro that will take repeated tightenings and loosenings? What's the drip tips made of? Are they made of crappy plastic or is something that'll last you for a while and protect you from the heat from the attic? Then we get into the particular workings of the product that I'm going to be looking at. What's its airflow like? Is it smooth as velvet or is it as noisy and as turbulent as the slipstream coming off of a mainline freight train going flat out? When you turn the AFC off, does it fully shut off the airflow or is there still some air leakage? In other words, is the AFC great, passable or just plain sucky? What's its juice flow control or lack thereof like? When you shut down the JFC and open up the tank to fill it, does the tank flood all over the place? Does it get a little bit gurgly after filling? Do you get a mouthful of hot juice or does nothing happen at all? How easy is it to build on? In other words, how does it handle the coils? Are the coils legs torqued out of shape, crushed or just plain mangled beyond all recognition when you're trying to tighten up on the coil? Or in the case of a stock coil tank, how easy is it to change out the coil head without having any juice that might still be left in the tank flooding all over the place? How easy or not is the wicking of it? Does it need so much cotton that it won't feed juice easily and the coils are thereby starved, making you run the risk of the dry hit from hell left and right? Or will it only accept so little cotton that the wicking won't hold the juice back even while the JFC is closed off and it floods all over the place, you and your mod? How's its flavor reproduction? Does the vapor that comes out of it taste even remotely like what the juice tastes like when you put it on your knuckle? How's its cloudage performance? Does it produce a weather system that would make a category five plus hurricane hang its head in shame? Or does it produce less vapor than a tea kettle just coming on the boil? What's its juice consumption like? Is it a juiceaholic or is it a teetotaling penny pinching miser? These are just some of the things that need to be considered when evaluating a product for a review. They're all things that you will be experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis if you own this product. And they all take time to evaluate. That's one of the main reasons I put out so few reviews a month. I literally live with these products day in and night out. And same way you would if they were your products. Okay. This is future me, all right? Uh, during my little rant that I've been doing, uh, I forgot completely to actually sit here and say, tell you what I thought of this vape itself. So before I get into a little more rant, we're gonna go through this. Okay, now this is the, the, uh, the build that you just saw me doing down there, okay? Uh, right now I have it, Hang on a second. It says 0.179 ohms. That's because I just got through double checking the thing. I don't know why it went down that far, but it did. Uh, 52 watts, 460 degrees with a 75 watt boost. Okay. Now. I've got this on replay, okay? Um, airflow, as you can see, is fully open. I'm gonna shut this down just a little bit, like halfway, okay? You can see it's a little less than halfway, right? Clouds are good. Clouds are very good, okay? Um, flavor, very good, okay? So I have no complaints about that, all right? Um, that's all I wanted you to see. I wanted you to see how it actually uh, handled and exactly how 
I found the flavor. Okay? Sorry. Back to past me. Now, as to this Addy. Overall, I found this Addy to be really well built and with an attention to detail in just about every respect that is very refreshing considering some of the other products I've seen of late. As to its color, while I'm not normally a fan of rainbow colored anything, I found the way the colors were produced on this Addy, especially with its matte finish, it looks absolutely stunning. Well, at least to this child anyway. The color isn't just painted on like some companies do. This color is right into the metal and unless you grind away at it or hit it with a blowtorch and glow it out, there's, it's just going to be there to stay. Having said that though, I do have a few issues with this Addy. One of the major ones being a total absence of any kind of juice flow control and thereby the tank having a propensity to flood out when you go to refill the tank. Hence my insistence on the build deck section in getting the wicking just spot on. To remedy this, when filling, I always invert the tank for the last few turns of the fill top. This allows the compressed air bubble that forms at the top of the tank to travel back up the glass completely and any remaining juice that's in the bottom of the tank to run back into the tank. This allows the air pressure in the tank to equalize. Then. After bringing the tank right side up, I take one or two really good deep pulls on the tank while firing it to develop that negative air pressure space in the tank that keeps the juice where it's supposed to be in the tank and not all over me or my mod. I also feel that the airflow on this tank is just a little bit too airy. There are some times when I feel that I need to close the AFC down by one third or even one half. At other times, the AFC feels just fine being fully open. Now, this may just be what I call situational subjectiveness, but I feel I need to report on it anyway. The remaining issues I have are mainly with the provided peripherals, and these being totally subjective also, for the most part. One, the drip tips that come with this Addy. As with most Addies these days, I personally find these to be way too short. I cannot stand having my mouth so close to the top of a tank or a dripper that I'm feeling the heat coming off of it. I know that some people will say that having a longer drip tip will affect the overall flavor rendition of the Addy and to some extent they may be right, but if an Addy or dripper can produce a fully flavorful vape with just a few more millimeters of drip tip. Just think how much more flavor will be there when you decide to put on a shorty or a competition style drip tip. Hmm, that could be interesting. Two, and this is gonna be a big one. I don't know why Watofo felt it necessary to include a rip off of the coily tool in later production runs of this Addy and to do it in such a way as to produce an item that is not only generally not useful, but to be in a form factor that is blatantly obvious as to its parentage. I mean, the original rod tool that they put in the first batches was, at least to this child, totally fine. If Watofo felt it wasn't working the way they wanted it to, why didn't they just do a deal with Simon, the creator of the Coily, to include a Coily or at least a pared down version of it? After all, they did a deal with Off to include their branded mesh strips in with the Profile Unity RTA, didn't they? Or was it just that Simon's UK patent was not recognized in China and they therefore felt they could do it without running afoul of the law the way they might have if they had tried that with off and the patent I know they must have taken out on their products in China? Yeah, I know saying this most probably won't win me any friends over at Watofo, but at least I hope they're big enough folks to accept a little criticism, constructive criticism, on a subject that even Matt has publicly stated he wasn't and isn't happy about. Well, these are about the only cons that I have with this Addy, and I feel that none of these issues is either a deal breaker or in any way detracts from the overall solid performance that I've gotten from the Serpent Elevate. Look, I want to go on record here saying that if you decide to go out and buy this Addy, 
you won't go very far wrong. After all, there are a lot worse ones out there and for a whole hell of a lot more money than what this one is. Seriously, the Serpent Elevate is a solid performer at a price point that won't break the budget for the month and it's fully deserving of the two thumbs up across the board. Oh, and before I forget, I want to say this to you, Matt. You've done good, brother. You've done real good. And I also want to extend to you my personal congratulations on your new Passage RDA. I look forward to getting my paws on one of them in the near future and putting it through some testing. No hint here. Well, that's all I've got for you. But before I go, I want to say thanks to Daniel over at DJ LSB Vapes for the win on this Addy. I have been getting many, many hours of pure enjoyment out of it and it's the mark of a real gent to give back to his people the way he does. Thank you, bro. Okay, well, I guess I'm out of here. Uh, Till next we meet, may the road rise to meet you, may the wind be ever at your back. May the good Lord hold you in the hollow of his hand and may you be in heaven a half an hour before the devil knows you're dead. God bless and take care for now.